Look, I don't want to talk about the weather. But I finally have a clear night. Now it is a moon night tonight, but that's not gonna stop me. I haven't been able to do any imaging for so long. I'll take it. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. I had another video in store for you today and I was gonna go out and do all this stuff and show you a technical step-by-step, -step, but I promptly went outside and forgot everything I knew. Because I haven't done any astrophotography in so long because of the weather, I really couldn't get anything working. Uh, so I thought I'd just do a video on PhD multi-star guiding, a new feature in PhD. And spoiler alert, all you do is tick a box. There's not that much to it. I don't know how I can flesh a whole video out of that, but uh, I'm gonna try. There are flies and mosquitoes everywhere. <sighs> okay, let me show you how this works. It's pretty straightforward. Go to the Open PhD2 Guiding website, uh, which I put together a few years ago. Uh, it's still there and it's still working for them, which is great. Uh, go to the Download PhD2 section, go to the Development Snapshot Build links, and you may as well just get whatever is the most recent one. You'll notice there's some changelog stuff about the multi-star feature. Uh, download it and if you're worried about it knocking out your PhD2 settings, don't worry. They're actually all preserved. So all you do is close your instance of PhD2, install the development build, all your settings will be preserved. You won't have to rebuild darks or anything like that. It'll just work, which is great. Now normally of course when you've got PhD2 running you have your one star there. So all you do is hit the brain icon and there's a new tick box in here. Use multiple stars, tick that box. Pretty goddamn easy. And boom, you've got multiple stars, hit the guiding button, and we're away. That really wasn't that hard, was it? That's the sound of a nearly dying fly. Could you die any louder? Oh, yeah, it's guiding. And uh, it looks like it's guiding at about 0 0.47 right now. But why is multi-star guiding useful? Uh, it's basically an improvement on the algorithm because you've got more data points. Now, if you've ever seen the moon on a night of poor seeing, you'll notice that the moon sort of shimmers. The whole surface of the moon is rippling. That means that if you were trying to guide, that fly is still alive. So if you were trying to guide on just one crater peak or something of the moon, uh, that crater peak might fluctuate because of the atmosphere moving around. Uh, so it's not a good indication of what reality is. The things we're trying to guide out 
are things like periodic error in the mount or little mechanical imperfections that can cause that star to wobble. The weather moving that star is actually distorting reality. The reality is that star is fixed in space and ideally we want the mount to be fixed in space too. So what multi-star guiding does is it gives you more data points to work with. By guiding on lots of stars there will be some fluctuations across the field as atmosphere wobbles through but because we're guiding on more data points that effect is going to be averaged out a little bit and that means you'll be tracking the star based on the reality of its fixed position in space more than the weather fluctuations. My god I just realized how close my face is to the lens this is ridiculous. Well the reason I'm so zoomed in is because I want you to see the guiding graph. Okay there are a couple of things to note here. The first thing is obviously that there are clouds. I'm shooting through high clouds. Now when we're guiding on stars we're used to losing the star every now and then. I found that with the PhD2 multi star guiding it's a lot more robust and I was actually able to shoot through all of this cloud and only lose the star once when a big thick patch came through. The other thing to notice is over here we can see the guiding is 0.4 0.45. I feel that the improvement that you get with PhD2 multi-star guiding is about 0.1 RMS total error improvement. So it's not going to fix poor guiding, it's not going to fix bad polar alignment. You will still need to tweak settings but it does give a minor and very slight improvement. The real power of this I think is the stability though when your conditions like this are subpar. So now of course the question becomes should you use this feature? Now when I was a kid computers had this little button on it called turbo and I assume it made the computer run a little bit faster but the question is why would anyone not press the turbo button and why would you not tick the box that says multi-star guiding? Just tick the box. Actually the only use case where you wouldn't tick that box is if you were specifically guiding on something non-standard like a comet where you do actually want to guide on a single point source of light. Otherwise, for all of our photographic DSO needs, just tick the box. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Star Stuff. Sorry it took so long to explain that you should just tick the box. If you do want to listen to the music featured in this episode, it's a little composition that I wrote. And my wife Anna is playing the keyboard synthesizer solo in the middle there, and I think she ripped it out pretty good. Now that the biblical disasters have stopped for a little while, hopefully I'll get some imaging time, and I'll see you again shortly. In any case, my name is Dylan O'Donnell. You've been watching Star Stuff, and remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.